Hi, I'm Evelyn O'Connor. You can find me on Twitter. I presented at SESI 2013 on the key skills of the new junior cert. So the key skills are working with others, managing yourself, staying well, communicating, being creative and managing information and thinking. The first key skill I want to discuss is working with others. We need to give students lots of opportunities to collaborate and IT gives us plenty of options here. I use a virtual learning environment called Edmodo which is extremely safe. Every post that students put up is seen by the teacher but you can put your classes into small little groups if you want them to collaborate on a project together. I'm also thinking about using Skype so that we can connect with classrooms in other parts of Ireland and maybe even classrooms internationally. I haven't fully figured out how we can use it yet but I definitely think there are possibilities here. Another option is Google Docs but for child protection reasons you'll need to make sure that everyone is set up with their own school account. The second key skill is managing yourself. We want students to be organised, we want them to take pride in their work and if possible we want them to find an audience beyond the classroom. I think e-portfolios have great potential here. We all take greater care with our work when we know that other people are going to be looking at it and naively or not I'd like to think that students would put more effort into an e-portfolio that lots of people could be looking at rather than a copy that gets collected once every couple of weeks. Another thing that's worth looking at here is the idea of the flipped classroom. The theory behind it is that students will listen to podcasts, watch videos, read articles, do research the night before and then they come into class and they do something with that content. In theory this works brilliantly, in reality you'll have mixed results. Some students will put lots of effort into it, some students will put the bare minimum in and some will forget to do it altogether. But we're used to that because some students put lots of effort into their homework, some put minimal effort and some don't do it at all. The third key skill of the Reform Junior Cert is communicating. I guess it's a bit ridiculous to suggest that we haven't been doing this all along. The important thing is that students get an opportunity to communicate with each other, to communicate with us and to communicate, as I said before, beyond the classroom. The four main ways we'll ask students to communicate with us are through images, audio, video and text. Right now you're probably getting your students to use mind maps to create posters and storyboards to clarify their ideas. One way to do it online is to create an infographic. When it comes to audio, obviously the most effective way of communicating with people is to talk to them. But when you've got one teacher with over 200 pupils, trying to get time to speak to people individually is really, really difficult. One way to get around this is to get students to record themselves discussing a topic and it becomes clear really, really quickly whether they actually understand it or not. I use Audacity, which is a free software. You also have to download a thing called Lame so that you can encode it as an MP3 and then you just have to find somewhere to upload it. There are lots and lots of tools out there that allow you to combine video, audio, images and text. So you could use Prezi, Animoto, iMovies, Glogster which allows you to create posters, Puppet Pals which is like a little animation software on the iPad. It doesn't really matter which applications you use as long as students find a way to create content to show off their knowledge and to achieve some kind of deep learning. And this is where the alarm bells should start ringing. Just because a teacher uses IT, that does not mean that deep learning is taking place. Just because a student is studying using IT does not mean that deep learning is taking place. We need proper training in how to use IT effectively in our teaching. Or there's a real danger that we'll all get seduced by these shiny new tools without really knowing how to use them properly to achieve deep learning. And that means raising the bar. It means asking our students to explore difficult concepts and to engage with complex subject-specific vocabulary. Because the truth is, a man with a scant vocabulary will almost certainly be a weak thinker. 
the richer and more copious one's vocabulary and the greater one's awareness of fine distinctions and subtle nuances of meaning, the more fertile and precise is likely to be one's thinking. Knowledge of things and knowledge of the words for them grow together. If you do not know the words, you can hardly know the thing. <laughs> fourth key skill is staying well. We want our students to be physically, emotionally and psychologically in a good place when they're in school, as far as that is possible. In terms of IT, we need to teach them how to switch off. Internet addiction is a real problem now. We need to teach them how to stay safe online and also how to be responsible. If they wouldn't say something in the real world, then they should think twice about saying it online. I think we all complain about our students' lack of engagement, but if we give them more opportunities to be creative with whatever tools they want to use, I think we'll be surprised by just what they come up with. Because it's not just about the content, it's about what they do with the content. It's about what we ask them to do with the content and what they decide to do with the content. That's where the learning happens. The last key skill is managing information and thinking. This is our greatest challenge as teachers and our greatest challenge as students because the world has changed so much. If all of the knowledge in human existence is available on the internet, how do we teach students to cope with that? We need to teach them how to search the web intelligently, how to navigate it without getting lost, how to verify and record their sources, how to analyze and assess the relevance of what they're looking at, how to create, upload and tag content, how to understand copyright. And we need to learn how to do all of these things ourselves, which is no easy feat. How do we get there from here? Honestly, I don't know. I'm only using this technology in fits and starts every now and again when I can get into the computer room because the students sitting in front of me don't have a device. There's just the teacher controlled computer in the room. I think we need help integrating what we know about teaching and what we know about IT. I think if we jump in too quickly without upskilling teachers properly, this is gonna be a wasted opportunity. I think we need an IT technician in every secondary school in the country who's not teaching but who instead is working full-time to upskill staff and to fix equipment as it breaks. And I think if at first we don't succeed we need to try, try again because figuring this out really, really matters. And if you're still listening, seriously, fair play, thanks a million, because this is some heavy shit and I don't have any answers. But um, I guess at least if we get the dialogue going, maybe we can figure some stuff out together. <laughs>